So the satanic cosmos um, is basically the, the, the essence of it is that people uh, look more sideways than up in a way by instead of focusing on the higher or the divine or what is, uh, what is the, the greater guidance they feel uh, driven by their uh, more social impulses so um, a lot of the, um, the satanical angels they also in a way didn't in a way fall originally but they fall as a consequence of the first fall so they saw that like the the luciferical angels and the harmonic angels were falling and some of the original satanic angels and they felt like oh how terrible they're lost they we have to guide them back we have to help them and instead of listening and upholding the structure of the heavens they felt like no we must help them we must bring them back and they went also down mm -hmm. so some of them well fell because of their original sins some of them fell as a result of the original sin which also made them rebel because their own uh, yeah they felt like our universe is falling apart and they wanted to keep it together instead of allow it to, to separate mm. so this strong desire to reunite or to reconnect uh, can also be part of the yeah the motivation of the uh, satanical uh, spirit or satanical soul um, so if you look a little bit in, in direction, so the person who is very harmonic is looking down, the person who is Luciferic looks inward, and the person who is Satanic looks outward. They often forget themselves. Um, they often identify also with I ideals and greater purposes. Um, how to save the world, how to save nature, how to save mankind. <laughs> This is very much, um, and there, in a way, it's also possible for a uh, a romantic person to have such thoughts, but they're usually very structured about it. And the people who are more um, <laughs> satanic in nature, they're usually more involved or connected. Um, like, yes, I have to do it, I have to help, but they haven't got the foggiest idea what the real problem is, so how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But the satanic cosmos is also called the lazy cosmos. Uh, because in general, uh, spiritual development is slowest here. Um, so, uh, because the person who is in satanical cosmos has actually no interest in working on themselves or improving themselves or healing themselves or going back into the heavens they have not this ambition uh, they just sit around and like when they see somebody oh you have pain oh we <laughs> take care of you and oh you're hungry here i can make you a cookie <laughs> but if there's nothing around them they don't do anything and they tend not to do anything for themselves <laughs> So their personal progress is rather slow, but if you have a group of them together, like they pull each other up and they pull each other forward, even though they have no interest in helping themselves. <laughs> so as a group or as a community they make progress, but not so much on an individual level. Um, so for a, a person who has this satanical nature, um, the social environment is, is, very, very, is really of paramount importance for their, uh, for their development. Um, both in positive and in negative sense, because in positive sense there are, if you are around other beings who have this tendency, they can see many ways in which to help you, in which to assist you, in which to feed you or to stimulate you. And this way you are, uh, yeah, you are pushed pushed up and when you ha have developed yourself you have more power you can pull other people up so it's in a little bit a little bit can be compared to how um, Chinese people migrate so uh, one Chinese person um, like there's a whole village everybody is poor uh, everybody gathers all their money so that one of them can go and live in Germany and open a restaurant. So they all invest and he opens a restaurant and when the restaurant is 
is working, he can hire more people. He starts bringing people from his village who gave him the money to start a restaurant. He starts bringing them over. <laughs> <laughs> and this is kind of how the, the, this cosmos works. Smart. Yeah. So they, they believe like, okay, well, we're all on the same level, we're all trapped here, so, well, one of us should be helped and <laughs> this person will go on a higher level and that person is then better able to help all of us to rise up to that level. So this is usually the, the, the process, but it is, as you can say, a rather slow process. <laughs> because like, yeah, if you send one person to have a restaurant and he has to bring over the entire village one by one as his restaurant business grows and he opens up an next restaurant and he needs more personnel, it, it, it grows very stably but very slow. <laughs> Stereotype exists. Yes, it like is, uh, it why is. this is mm -hmm. uh, like Satan or oh, dark black uh, gold mm -hmm. and fire. <laughs> yes, in the tarot it is quite different because there's many different explanations of the tarot, but in most tarot systems it is seen as the ego, uh, as the self awareness, self consciousness, identification with your with yourself or with your own power. So it is mainly. Um, the trap you make for yourself, your your own worst enemy. Uh, this is usually shown by by uh, the devil, but the devil can be both positive and negative. Uh, in the tarot, you, a card can be um, right face up or wrong face up. So in the right face up, it means that you have uh, self-control, self-discipline. Um, you know yourself. Um, and uh, in the negative thing, you are enslaved by yourself, you are not free at all. It is not so much purely the ego, which is more also the, the, in the chariot. Um, but the chariot is more, um, if you, you could say, the illusionary self, while the devil goes more to your true self, to your true nature, really seeing and becoming one with your own shadow. Because everybody has sides of themselves which they are unconscious of or they don't want to accept from themselves. And this is the, the challenge also of the, of the devil. So every step of the tarot is in a way uh, a step back towards the heavens, towards unity. Um, so everyone is a key to your personal development to move into yeah, a higher spiritual level. And this is the, the key which is symbolized by the devil. Also, the devil usually has a pentagram, uh, which also uh, is, is a symbol for the quintessence. So the four elements plus life force or ether force. Um, and if you control the, the quintessence, you also control all the planetary influences, all the astrological influences, the development and uh, transformation of your own personality and also of all your own powers. So it is ultimate control which is uh, ultimate power, which is basically symbolized by the, by the pentagram. Um, there's a lot of discussion also whether the pentagram is the, the symbol of the king of uh, uh, King Solomon uh, from the Bible, because he was also said to be the master of all. So it is often called also Solomon's, uh, Solomon's seal. depending if also right way up, so the point up or with two points up. Two points up it's called the horned star, and then it is seen as, as negative, like power controlling you. And if it has the one point up, it is uh, shown as the life force controlling all other elements. So then you are the master of your, of your fate. So. Uh, could you just go a little bit into the dark side of the satanic cosmos? Yes. Um, and the satanic cosmos, uh, in a way, depends very much on, uh, on unity and idealism. And, um, idealism itself can be a trap, because idealism um, 
you believe in something which is greater than the individual. And this is also the essence of armies, <laughs> for instance. Like your the army is greater than the individual, so you have to die to sacrifice yourself so that the army can continue, can continue its mission, can be unharmed. Um, and uh, the dark side of the of the satanic cosmos is very much into this, into that the uh, um, the goal is, is greater than than the individual. So um, of course, to achieve something, often there are challenges or there need to be sacrifices. But uh, the dark side, in a way, is basically saying like it doesn't matter who of you has to die or even if all of you have to die as long as the goal is reached and ultimately this can be very detrimental so instead of the group making progress uh, the group can actually suffer from uh, from yeah, being used for the wrong goal or being inspired towards the wrong goal um, and also the group pressure can become very strong so that the group starts to identify in wrong and right. So instead of the ideal being there, like, okay, we want to save humanity, it can be like, um, Belgium must win, or no, the Netherlands must, be, must win. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, yes, you're, you're serving a group, like the Belgians or the Dutch, but because the group is so narrow and it's also focused on the very low ideals, uh, yeah it's not very good and this is as I said also the dark side where you focus more on competition more on power than actual the, the purity um, so uh, politics is also a very good example of the, of the dark side so often a political party starts with with some ideals so party for the animals um, yeah, gosh, we want to, to speak for the animals, the animals need rights, they need an advocate to protect them, to fight for them. Um, this is a very beautiful ideal, very good ideal. And then it comes to like, okay, so, but to do that we need power, we need influence, we need voters. So, how will we get that? Well, okay, uh, so we can't... Mm, yeah, just help others to take care of the animals because this is our special domain and if they don't need us, nobody will vote for us <laughs> and then it turns into darkness <laughs> because you're in a way, instead of helping everybody to take care of the animals you want to colonize and say this is what our group does and we're not going to help other people to copy us or to do what we are doing and then mm. it becomes twisted <laughs> and same with religions like. Uh, we are the only true religion. Everybody has to follow Christ or Buddha or uh, uh, Mohammed. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, it's basically <laughs> an over-identification with, okay. an, ide yes. with an, uh, a basic ideal yes. and yeah. being willing to sacrifice everything for that. Yes, and also that there, there is an interest mm. in the power of the group. Okay. So that's in, for instance, the Crusades, like Christianity is stronger or Islam is stronger. Uh, and the same in the Second World War and the Cold War, which is stronger, capitalism or communism? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay. And then it is like both ideals start out as positive, like communism, it is like, oh, yes, we need to share things with each other and like the, the, the rich and the poor they can all share and everybody can have enough uh, it's a positive ideal and capitalism is also like oh you should be free and you should uh, if you work hard you should get more and you can build your own your own wealth and your own comfort level so they start out relatively as positive ideas <coughs> but then it becomes about power and everybody has to work in a factory to make guns and weapons because we have to compete with the capitalists and the capitalists have to pay taxes and all their wealth is taken away and squeezed out by banks because we need more money to for the war machine and more nuclear weapons mm -hmm. and ultimately both of them are about destroying the other and destroying the world <laughs> mm -hmm. so this is very much how the dark side pulls people yeah in false you yeah, know dark side is always about false ideals but often the people who have a very connected nature, 
they often are very uh, of a satanic nature often very sensitive to to social pressure to people loving them to people respecting them and feeling useful um, this is very essential trap for the for the person of satanic nature they always want to feel useful they always want to have a purpose they always want to serve or help and if out of this desire to be useful or to help or to have a place in society they often become annexed by uh, luciferical impulses or arimanic impulses who say like okay you can be useful in our system or in helping me attain more power or light and they lose their focus and their connection to their own cosmos quite easily so they allow, they allow <coughs> their own abuse then they allow their own abuse out of this you're vulnerable because what you get is the, the more higher the vibration gets the less stable it gets the more flexible people become mm -hmm. so a person in the harmonic cosmos they're not flexible at all they know who they are what is the system how to work they have a focus they have a plan already a person in luciferical cosmos is a little bit more free more okay i want to do it, try whatever but they are unable to let go of themselves. The person in satanic cosmos has a little bit more freedom, but because of this freedom also less stability and ultimately a person in uh, divine cosmos they have no stability at all <laughs> mm -hmm. because they can identify with all the cosmoses and with all the people and go wrong with everything. <laughs> so it's, it's, it becomes also a little bit harder the high, the higher vibration we get into, um, so it, it's it's more challenging to be in a higher cosmos, but also it's a little bit nicer to be in this higher vibration. <laughs> because it, it's also on another level, it's also karmically. Mm -hmm. If you you are usually at a place or in an incarnation uh, which corresponds to your abilities and to your desires, or combination of the two. And um, yeah, I think I'll, that's an answer. I'll just see if there's other questions. <laughs> no? mm -mm. Okay. Then we will go for a change. <laughs> Open yourself up to the vibration. spirit makes contact with you. Feel yourself open up more. And you find yourself being part of something greater.
feel the harmonious connection first between you and the other humans in the room. is flowing freely from all parts of your body to all parts of their bodies. That as a group we are more harmonious, more light than the sum of our parts. greater whole. Expand your consciousness to beyond this realm, to the forests outside, the birds, the cat, the very force of life itself. life force itself. It's also a satanic power. Because the life force connects us with everything we eat, with everything which eats us. This way we all share we're all part individual but not separate. Try to look a little bit for all the sub goals, all the different organs who try to serve our universe in different ways. Are you part of a liver trying to purify the world? Testing, bringing higher impulses and food to this world. Try to feel your specific connection to the universe. part of the machinery which makes spiritual life and spiritual growth possible. You are the universe, but you're also the caretakers of the universe. everything and every part in it as a part of yourself. There only exists the goddess, the one being. You are a manifestation of this power. Whatever the 
distinctiveness you have, your special skills, your special knowledge, it only exists as a function of the living God. healing herself, growing herself. these other cosmoses exist, but in a way the light side of the Arimani cosmos is also trying to serve the home. But they are more stuck, more limited, less flexible than you. Consciousness in your freedom, in your sense of individual responsibility. You are not focused on the system, on the orders of what you have to do, but on the task which has to be performed, not on the method. Focusing on the power and the technique that leads you down again into the Luciferical cosmos. So you accept that there is a system, that there is personal power and progress, but they are merely tools. for creating a different universe, a different order, a greater harmony. Try to feel also how are you within this greater small place. Do you need to move? Do you need to be fed more? Or talk to the cosmos? And just as you're healing it, allow yourself to be healed by it. Allow the birds to help you, the trees to help you, the earth to help you, the spirits to help you, to find your place. You're part of the whole as best you can. So you get to the place, the stronger the energies which will flow through you, the more bright your connections will be. And look for this place and where you are, the most light you can be, where you do the most good you can do. And ask all the powers, the goddesses and the angels of this place, or your brothers and sisters, to guide you and support you, to 
into being what you should be. Try to get a glimpse of the future, future you, what you're growing towards. Go of the idea that you should do everything or be perfect, just yourself. Let others do their thing, you do your thing, and the whole will function. This is why this cosmos is in many ways the opposite. Lucifer Cosmos. This is why in this cosmos you never take power for yourself, to only take power and knowledge to fulfill your task. Towards others. Crystallize yourself a little bit. So you focus on the here and now. Feel your connection and purpose in this time and place. I thought we should come back. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, oh, no, I have to go back. <laughs>
It's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it was a great pressure here. Mm. So, uh, didn't feel free. Mm. Just uh, uh, looking for orientation. Mm -hmm. And the was one, it was good. Mm? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't free. And this road has a lot to do, of course, with the absorbed knowledge which we learn from society, parents, teachers. Uh, it's always a little bit of a struggle between the internal programming and external programming. What is good, what is right. kind of satisfied and having a yeah place and a task and I couldn't um, devote to everything but yeah I, I felt quite uh, well <laughs> <laughs> and like it, like it was really the end it was the feeling like yeah everything is just <laughs> fine <laughs> and developing as it should and <laughs> Gardener sitting in the garden. <laughs> oh my gosh, I like to watch things grow. <laughs> like watching things grow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Nice. It's, it's very relaxing. Yes. Yeah. Can relate to that. <laughs> For me, it was like uh, first time. Yes, we were like all together, but then. Everybody went to go uh, her or his own thing, and I was like, "Yay! Now I'm like fish in a water, like bird in the sky. I don't know, like horse in a field, and uh, a lot of moves." But uh, uh, in the same time, I felt uh, quite uh, a kind of uh, danger from another cosmos <laughs> mm -hmm. like uh, like this feeling like oh yes I'm in this forest but this forest will be cut down and yes it was very good uh, feeling but uh, also kind of like <sighs> sad <laughs> oh, okay. well maybe that is also indication then for your purpose to protect maybe a little bit this cosmos I'm extremely happy right now. <laughs> I'm overflowing with joy and uh, that was really a nice trip and it was uh, great for me to have this uh, feeling of being at home again and um, yeah there was uh, only a, a little, it wasn't sadness but it made me cry because it was a, such a relief to me to connect to that more deeply again and I was um, very happy to connect to to everybody. I was extremely happy to to have you around. It was like, oh yeah, great, you're here. And I, I was like driving over there and going, trying to connect to you. And and that was that was nice feeling for me. And um, yeah, and with the um, look into the future, um, it was like I was a bird. And I was um, spreading my wings, and it was like having uh, all these little little birdies on, <laughs> on my wings, <laughs> and like kind of feeding, feeding, mm -hmm. feeding them. So um, that was also also a nice feeling, and um, I also had the experience that I'm right now that I'm not in in the right place, that I should move. Mm -hmm. and that I should rise but um, a little more but mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know yet how to but mm -hmm. definitely it, for me it felt like okay you must grow mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and I also relate to this uh, feeling of um, yeah oh gosh I like to see things grow so that that is a very deep feeling within me so yeah that was nice thank you for guiding <laughs> for me it is also yeah very nice the voices so very much going home um, when I looked into the future I kind of saw that Christine and I are almost like switching positions <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. so it is, it is like the, 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 the war, warrior poet and the poet warrior <laughs> meeting each other halfway <laughs> yeah, so that is interesting <laughs> Yeah, I could see some healing talents blossoming up. <laughs> so, so, so nice. Yeah. And yeah, I also felt the connection to Kali. Yeah. Because apparently I'm still a little bit lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, a few years ago, I'll just go very quickly. A few years ago I had a talk with, uh, with Kali about um, my spiritual progress and she basically uh, told me that I was becoming like 80-90% like of the people who just literally asleep, <laughs> <laughs> just thinking they're living but they're just sleeping and that I and uh, I, I said like yeah but I don't want to get into this fighting and struggling and blah anymore and she said like yes but it's a phase everybody has to go through because if your spirit starts to awaken it starts to fight it starts to rebel because all the power other powers are trying to control you and you have your addictions and your sins and your attachment and society and ultimately if you win that fight you end up on the other side and you become sattvic person in balance in harmony but and it's very tough to get stuck in the middle and you can go back to being asleep or you can also break through <laughs> to become in harmony with everything instead of being asleep <laughs> and then also you can have peace so I got another kick like hey just falling asleep again <laughs> going the wrong way you should fight harder and just pop out on the other side <laughs> instead of <laughs> what you're doing so that was a nice gentle reminder but <laughs> 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 but I think it's a, it's, it's a reminder which is true for me, but I think also for many people mm. that they feel that the spiritual awakening is very hard, it brings so many struggles. So it's, the tendency is to go back to the old patterns instead of break through to the mm. new ones. So. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the time? <coughs> uh, it's like a, it's like five past half past what? Okay, <laughs> uh, six thirty-six. Yes. So we have half an hour. Continue. Yeah, well, not really, but okay. We have for the <laughs> time we have. Okay. <laughs> Okay, <coughs> so we go on to the last cosmos, which is basically a cosmos which doesn't really belong here. Um, because it's basically the unfallen cosmos. So these are yeah, uh, people or spirits who have not um, rebelled or separated. So, um, and for some people, um, especially those in Luciferical circles, they say, ah, they're behind. <laughs> they have not developed their own will, they have not developed their self-consciousness, uh, they have not developed their individuality. We are much more advanced than they are. <laughs> and in a way it is true, because they indeed don't experience themselves as being free-willed or individual. Uh, they experience themselves as being part of, yeah, of the divine, uh, part of the heavens, and in the heavens there is in a way only one will, there is only one being, there is only the absolute, the creator, uh, the master of the universe, uh, Allah, the greatest one, um, and his will is like a, 
something which is almost visible or palpable to them, like a certain vibration, a certain flow of energy, and they're all part of that flow. They are it, uh, but they're also part of it. So there is no separation from them. And um, in a way, you could say, as the this work of people say, they are asleep, <laughs> they are ignorant. <laughs> And this is also true. Um, so the spirit of people say, like, ah, but when we come back, we will be better and stronger than them because we will be part of the flow and have our own individuality and blah, blah, blah. But what they forget is you can't take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to become, yeah, indeed part of the divine and one, of the, one with the will and the, and the laws of the divine, um, then if your own willpower is so strong and if your own individuality is so strong then it is very hard to become one <laughs> because you're focusing on the differences not focusing on what is the same um, the thing is that from their perspective everything is God so even like the things which are fallen they're still parts of the, of the creator and they're still parts of the original yeah, being um, it is just that yeah, those parts of the being are yeah, more or less confused or in illusions or trapped or whatever. Um, so usually their perspective on us is to see us as lacking something rather than from, because from satanic perspective it's like yes but we are more love, we are more attached and they're like indifferent almost. <laughs> They don't care whether you live or die or are happy or <laughs> crying or in pain. Because for them, death, life, happiness, sadness, it is all part of the creation. <laughs> There's really no difference. One is not better than the other. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a very difficult bridge to cross. Um, so there are several major obstacles. Um, the first major obstacle is basically, indeed, our um, our identifications with, with transient things, with illusionary things. So we think we are who we are at the moment, but, well, even though I can have, like, hundreds or thousands of incarnations on this planet or as a human being, I am not a human being, I'm not even part of this planet. This is not my true nature. And I'm not my powers, my powers can be there with me one life, gone the next. And the same with my knowledge and all these identifications with temporary things. They really focus on differences rather than being part of the whole. Um, so this is the first major blockage uh, to reintegration. Uh, the second major blockage is really our, our tendencies, because through all our incarnations we build up habits. Uh, if you spend lots of incarnations as a healer, you tend to think of yourself as a healer or as a warrior, you tend to think of yourself as a warrior, but you're nothing, you're just playing a role, because this is the role you should serve at that time. And an angelic being is also ultimately flexible, because we as humans really like having our own little systems and our own little demonologies and we basically flip the demonology in the mirror and say like well angels are exactly the same as demons they have specific tasks, specific regions, specific <laughs> goals, what, to, what they have to do <laughs> they're all part of the system <laughs> but it's untrue so the Dionysus the Areopagite and the Catholic Church are completely wrong in this <laughs> because an angelic being is ultimately flexible. They don't identify with a specific task or a specific purpose, but they do have differences. And because of the differences, they are better at manifesting part of the divine will or some part of the divine will than another part. So some are better at manifesting diseases, others are better at manifesting healing. But for them, they don't really see a difference in quality. It's all part, it's all an energy, it's all part of the divine plan and they don't see themselves limited to it. So a being which might be responsible for many diseases and plagues, oh, okay, well, if I need to heal, I will heal. <laughs> and also in hierarchy, they're very fluid. 
Um, they just uh, have knowledge, in a way, divine knowledge, of what is to be done and who is the best at it and what is their role in it. So they ultimately naturally find their place in or their task. They don't need to be told by a higher power, these are your orders, this is what you have to do. They know, like, okay, well, this is the main person and I have to support this person. Um, so I, I will do it. <laughs> um, so this whole identification with our karmic past, with our tendencies, also has to disappear. And ultimately, and this is what's difficult, our free will. Because it is ultimately because we have free will that we have, in a way, manifested our free will in such a way that we have become separated. So our free will came in conflict with the divine plan and because of this we have free will, we can do what we want, we do what we want, but also we drift away from yeah, what is like the main current. We go in a little eddy swirling around on the side of the river instead of following the main flow. <laughs> So we're a little whirlpool unto ourselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. And going around in little circles until you know, we catch the main flow again and we can part of it. So the process of rejoining and separating is not one which happens in the dim past at the beginning of the universe. It's actually a continual process. So continually there are spirits leaving uh, the heavens and going into the fallen universe, but also spirits going out of the fallen universe, our place, reintegrating into the heavens. So it's just a continual process, depending on yeah our qualities and our choices we make. Um, so it is not so much really banishment or prison or punishment for our sins. Um, it is more a result of our free choice, and our free choice. Ultimately, our free will, which is the ultimate guide of our being, uh, it's the highest power in us, but it is still imperfect. And we are here, from the perspective of the divine cosmos, so that our personal will can be more similar to the will of the Absolute. So, and that when we want more what God wants, well, then there's no reason for us to remain separate, because then our will and the divine will will be closer together and of course you can have your own individual ideas about how to do it and when to do it but as long as you follow the general plan um, and have in a way the, the same inspiration as others so it is really uh, about allowing yourself to be guided to be inspired by the same as all the other angels instead of by lower powers so there's many uh, egregores, like uh, idealistical groups, and there's many gods and goddesses, but ultimately these are still lower inspirations. They may be higher than our own natural inspiration, but by working with egregores and working with gods and goddesses, ultimately we learn to be inspired by higher and higher powers, and then you move to angels, and ultimately you move to the Absolute itself, or the Holy Spirit, or uh, the Mother Goddess, uh, or yeah, uh, Sophia, uh, yeah, the Holy Wisdom, uh, which are basically all more or less the same, or different names for the same thing. But well, it sounds a little bit easier than it is. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, because ultimately it's also one step beyond um, enlightenment. Because enlightenment is basically that your own free will is no longer obstruct, obstructed by your own attachments, by your own karma. And you can transform your karma, you can transform your own attachments and your own illusions. Uh, but that doesn't mean that your free will is already harmonized with the will of the Creator. So. Uh, it's a kind of tricky thing already to become enlightened, let alone become like permanently enlightened or cosmically enlightened, and then it's another step still to reintegrate. Uh, 
and also if you reintegrate it doesn't mean that you will leave this universe because you have experience in this universe so it might be the will of the divine that you stay in this universe to help with the transformation of this universe <laughs> So you better accept so it. Not yeah, get to terms with it. Yeah, so it's not really escapist. <laughs> no. So as um, um, yeah, Vladimir uh, used to say, spiritual master, he said, spiritual work is work. It's really serious work. It's hard work. It's the most important work you will do in your life. And when you work really, really, really hard, and you finally finished your work and you can enter into heavens, then you really need to start working. <laughs> but I have to say, with the Enneagram, I heard it told that Vladimir was a six, and if you know people with Enneagram six, they believe very strongly in duty. <laughs> okay. yeah, well. This is their main motivation. <laughs> but he was also a person really of the heart, so and he was also cancer, so he really felt that everybody in the whole world, everything in existence was his family. <laughs> <laughs> and he likes to take care of his family, but well that's a rather big family for him. <laughs> <laughs> Including also the dark cosmoses, because they need his help most. <laughs> Yes, I'm in a way both happy and sad to say I'm not on this level. <laughs> so, any questions? No, mm -hmm. no. Okay. Well, then we'll take a journey. Feel that in this cosmos you're not so much focusing the things around you, but the things on higher levels of awareness than you. Feel how your intention is being pulled upward towards the true light. like any other place. But don't be afraid. Don't be nervous. Just feel ready to leave everything behind. for your friends. They will be taken care of. Allow yourself to be uplifted. 
yourself becoming one with your guide to feel how to help you to hear songs of the heavens voice of God Just allow them to liberate you. To take away from you all these heavy vibrations, all the shackles, which keep you in the fallen cosmos. all the things which are still crawling around in your mind, in your heart, in your belly. to leave everything to the divine. Trust, surrender. Be humble. Lose all your illusions of self-importance. Feel yourself becoming more flexible. Something which can be shaped by the divine. you're becoming stronger. Allow yourself to be guided to the place you should be and the form you should have. 
your essence will remain flexible temporarily for a lifetime or an eternity. You can be this or that. So the ultimate neutrality. Being beyond good and evil. Beyond light and dark. Try to get clear for yourself what desire of the divine is your impulse for going back into our universe. is the essence of the desire of your spirit. your current form, without forgetting your celestial nature, your celestial mission. personality crystallize around your divine core as you descend deeper and deeper towards the material world. that even though you arrive at the bottom, there is still this harmony, this divine vibration being carried through all your layers of being, through all the layers of the cosmos. But no matter where you are, you are still a part. separation is merely an illusion.
also be quite addictive. <laughs> yes. What is addictive? Uh, I pain through my hand. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. People sometimes get really, who make these journeys, they yeah. get trance addiction. So they don't come there. back really. <laughs> so up nice yeah. there. And they will mm. like stay half up there, half in their bodies and mm. be hit by a tram. <laughs> we can go all the way up there again. Ultimately, it's all the same. And, but yeah, it's usually the, the lower parts of ourselves which don't like to feel imprisoned in this lower vibration. So there's always the higher parts of our being always want to go up. They want to liberate themselves, they want to evolve. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more you work on becoming aware and strengthening these higher parts of your consciousness, um, the stronger this feeling will get, like, oh, what am I doing here? I don't belong here, I don't want to be here, I want to escape, I want yeah. to go back. But uh, behind Hello. besides this evolutionary impulse, uh, the desire to go back into the higher worlds, there's also the involutionary impulse, like what is your mission, what is your purpose, why did you come here, why were you sent here? Um, and it's important to balance these two. Because you're not here just to escape, because why else did you come here, why didn't you stay up there? <laughs> mm -hmm. so, and actually this time, actually the, the spring equinox, is really the ultimate time to find out this balance between the evolutionary and evolutionary impulse. So time is a time of equinox? Yes. Let's just spread it down. Genau. <laughs> genau, was ist es überhaupt? Die, was ich vorhin dir auch erklärt habe, als wir spazieren gegangen sind, ne? dass das eigentlich die, der Frühjahrsbeginn ist. Ach so. Und, ah, um, okay. dass die Sonne, wie die Sonne steht und danach zu bleiben. Ja, ich kenne den Begriff nicht, Equinox. Ja. Ja. Equinox okay. ist das Gleiche. Und Nox ist Nacht. Ah, okay. Equinox ist Nacht. It's often like when there's a balance between light and darkness, it is very easy for energies to move back and forth between worlds. Also this time, like the, when it's just on the edge of day and night, is the ideal times for meditations and rituals and things like this. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, would you like to share? Yeah, um, um, I felt a bit afraid, <laughs> really. And, and you, you uh, talked about once more, don't be afraid. So that's that that my pro process at this moment. And uh, it's not so easy to 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 hear the upper voices. Mm -hmm. What they tell, it was hardly to to. To, to recognize so, but the, it was um, another part of consciousness for voices mm -hmm. not on, on that uh, part that we use here when, when we are when we're human beings so um, Need more practice <laughs> to 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 hear the voices. Mm. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> mm. Mm. I did feel that before. And, uh, and there's two ways to do it. So you can do a trance journey. You try to get up there. It's easier to pray to ask them to come to you. And so that is what what I'm doing actually. <laughs> it's easier. So this is the hard way. The, the easier way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My, my path, so mm -hmm. it is no doubt. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I could have been staying for longer <laughs> actually, but uh, yeah, I was called back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, 
yeah, I, I also had like this feeling, like, ah, okay, yeah, I cannot stay because I need to... I always had this form, and I feel this form in my body as well, just like this, you know, and like bringing the down. Yeah, and it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like this, yeah. 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 So this this is uh, like okay this yeah <laughs> well I go back again <laughs> okay. I come back here again and then yeah yeah but it was it was good I I felt I mean uh, yeah it is so different than um, the um, satanic cosmos then yeah I I really felt okay I am here and uh, I'm connected to everything and there it was I was not here at all anymore you know it was like mm -hmm. okay there is uh, yeah it's just all it is there and you can connect to it but it's really um, but somehow it's also separated from here yes mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> That's really the, important, the, the difficult thing, because there's no focus, in a way, and also no focus on, on this, because it's all seen as not meaningless, but, yeah. but part of the divine yeah. anyway. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, well... <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, and this is also why, yeah, or for me, like, like talking out of my normal consciousness with an angel is usually not a pleasant thing. Mm -hmm. Um, because angels know only of one thing. <laughs> there is the word of God. And yeah, what you think about it or do with it or are happy with it or not, it is inconsequential. Whether you cry or scream or happy or yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> and in this way the, the angels are very uh, impersonal. <laughs> And which is very different from the kind of Renaissance ideas of angels which we have today. <laughs> 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 angels like these the nice guys who help you and are all pretty and beautiful. And well, <laughs> you know, it can be pretty scary. Yeah. Yes, they're, they're in a way like, like, like in a way they're, 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 they're like a sociopath. They also have no empathy in the normal sense. They have no morality in our sense. <laughs> so I, our ideas of good and evil, they don't apply to them at all. <laughs> yeah, and they're ultimately totally uncontrollable by us. So, yeah. <laughs> Did you say, do they have empathy? No. 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 <laughs> no. Yeah. Then there is no difference between life, death, pain, sadness, or... <laughs> so they cannot empathize. <laughs> But they know she feels very well. In a way, yes, in a way, no. <laughs> because a lot of our experiences are due to our illusionary in nature. And they just see them as being illusionary in nature, so they can't go into it. It's for me like watching a movie, it is like... <laughs> it's not, you know it is not real, like, okay, the dragon is not real. <laughs> and for them it is like, yes, you see a dragon, you see it, so they see our sadness, but they also know it's, it's not real, it's just an illusion made with some computer with some special effects. Mm. And to them it's the same way looking at our feelings. <laughs> and yeah, of course you can have some fun with believing that the dragon in the movie is real, and wow, that's exciting. And yeah, in this way they look at well, while well, you're entertaining yourself with your own little things. <laughs> But for them, they see it as a voluntary choice <laughs> to believe in it or not. <laughs> and it's your own game. And well, if you don't want to play this game, why did you leave, leave uh, the heavens then? So, <laughs> so yeah, different perspective on things. Okay. Um, probably I was part of this. Of this endless uh, um, form, mm -hmm. and uh, there were a lot of like like things, like light things coming out a lot everywhere. Like, it was 
like connection that's all these things are doing what they have to do in different levels in different cosmoses and yeah I felt like okay I came here now I look like this at this all like from perspective of this all mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and but now, in this moment, I came here just to do my thing with the to do. Mm. And yeah, it looks like... Oh, what is that? Cosmic <laughs> uh, morning. Yes, everything will be okay. <laughs> but uh, why I have to do this? What I have to do while I'm here? Uh, as you told in the first, about this, yeah? If, uh, for example, satanic cosmos will be bad, it will be harder to get out from uh, yes. uh, from Arimanic and Lucifer cosmos. It's true, just because there will be nothing. Yes. There will be mm -hmm. like in that way. Like, yeah, it's, we are here. <laughs> How to put that in, in, in words, but um, what I could feel most was um, a vastness of it and the simultaneity of, of things, so that everything takes place at the same time or same moment. There's no now or f before and after and, and that's not that's not like we experience it and um, also that uh, what we have this um, light and dark and, and that, that's also at the same time it's, it's, it's it is very loud and crowded and it's all, all very uh, small and, and tiny and, and quiet and, and all all, all things that we experience as, as in, in human bodies and sensations and everything is happening at once so, and everything is taken care of at once and, and there's um, this uh, a strong feeling of it is all good the way it is everything that is carried out the way it is and, and you don't have to worry there's, there's nothing to you, for you to do you just be there and be there and there's nothing more to do. To, to, uh, it was like I was just standing there and and what standing there. <laughs> so and, and I was um, I I couldn't even say if it was a nice feeling or not. So it was just and there the story ends. So mm -hmm. and when it came for your question came so to focus on uh, what. What could it be that that made you come here? And and um, I was again in this mode of, of, of um, <laughs> caretaking. And but I but at first I felt confident with it because it matched with a picture I had before. But um, then I it crossed my mind that maybe I'm kind of like making it up because it's a pattern I have. Mm -hmm. So I'm not completely sure about. That so, or I'm not from from my nature. I'm not willing to trust it at once because so I have to prove it first. It's, it's this again. So. Yeah, yeah, overwhelming thing. So. Thank you. On the one hand, I always have a problem losing my form. <laughs> so on the one hand, it's very nice to have no form, to be completely yeah. shapeless, but on the other hand, I really identify very strongly with it. Uh, so I never feel comfortable letting go. <laughs> so there's always this lack of trust, fundamental lack of trust. Um, and 
this is something which even exists on like my most fundamental <laughs> divine level, <laughs> this lack of trust. <laughs> wow. So, um, yeah, so I become confronted again with that in a way, like, the heaven accepts me, but if I can't accept heaven because I cannot trust it, I cannot let go, <laughs> then <laughs> yeah, I, I put myself here. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so to me it's always a little bit of a fuck. But it's, it's good once in a while to be reminded of my fundamental issues. Um, and it's also like it's, it's on, on the one hand, of, of course, a flaw, a weakness, uh, which causes me to be uh, But it's also something which is. Uh, which is a quality, because I can use it for, yeah, to help uh, the divine in changing things, changing some things, changing some things, because, yeah, stubbornness, lack of flexibility, focus, can also be quality. Ultimately, it's a quality if you can have them and not have them, and not when you I'm stuck with it. <laughs> so I have to practice. <laughs> but yeah, it's always nice to, to be back. And to feel this complete acceptance of myself, even though I judge myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to feel that it is me who's doing it and not anything else. <laughs> Yes, I don't belong there. I'm not good enough. Yeah, but we want you up here. No, I'm not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately my lack of trust is even so big that I don't trust myself. <laughs> oh wow. And we profit from it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So.